uh, uh, Earth with two A's. Um, he will critique uh, economic growth, but he won't come out and say capitalism is the problem. We need a new system. And so there's questions of uh, of no growth capitalism and things like that uh, lingering in the background, uh, which uh, are problematic because. Um, uh, if you're thinking that we can just slow down without addressing uh, the mechanism that uh, insists on not slowing down, then we're never going to get anywhere. And then on the other side, there are also uh, socially minded, uh, socialist minded uh, theorists and activists that uh, may or may not take uh, environmental issues seriously. I don't see them as their problems. Um, this has to do with that legacy of um, antagonism uh, between uh, environmental issues and social issues um, that is less relevant now but still needs to be uh, recognized. This is, this is one fight that we're all fighting together. And so that's sort of uh, what's in the background of this. Um, and I think that you'll be able to share more with me than I can. So let me just get on with my, my few uh, comments. Okay, so uh, issue number one, intellectual property rights um, and their effect on food technologies. Well, um, if you look at the farmer suicides in India over the last several decades um, and people being pushed off their land uh, into cities when it becomes more advantageous to have monocropping or have uh, less farmers uh, buying seeds every year from a company and then buying seeds again the next year, which means you, you uh, have all those people being moved off, of the, off the land and into the cities, a contemporary enclosure system, um, you, you com can come to recognize that something Something really odd is going on here. Um, right it, right yeah. now in the U.S., I just happen to have this with me. Uh, yeah. Suicide is in the U.S. is not replaced by uh, machinery deaths. It's number one cause of farmer deaths now in the U.S. Is suicide. That's currently right now in the last 10 years. From, uh, from, uh, we've lost 300 fam 300,000 family farms in the last two decades. I just thought that was an interesting Absolutely. It's not just in India, but right here in the US. Yeah. Um, and I apologize for uh, um, not thinking so locally, uh, yeah. but um, no, I, I'm trying to draw these as as uh, as common problems, and it's a global globalized system, so they happen all over the place. Oh, yeah. I think the reason why I focused on India is because I just got done reading Bandana Shiva's uh, Earth Democracy, uh, where she where she focuses on uh, the effects of uh, the Green Revolution in India um, and. Uh, Characterizes them, as, well. characterizes them as uh, uh, contemporary enclosures, pushing people off the land, enclosing of common lands, and, uh, uh, and, and taken over by corporations like over Monsanto corporations. and stuff, exactly. who's trying to push their products on all well, India. I think I want to say that they may just reject that, that they don't want any Monsanto, they ban Monsanto over there. I'm not sure if they're one of the 30 nations that have. Um, it's not. It's not completely. It's not completely banned. Uh, I don't know the exact up, up to date uh, information on it, but um, there there have been uh, there's been a huge grassroots backlash against it. And, I know uh, there has. Been but uh, and uh, Vanana Shiva, for instance, runs a uh, 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 a local a localized non for profit uh, seed sharing initiative uh, to get farmers to you know uh, reject. Uh, 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 GMOs and, and go back to, to using uh, uh, their own seeds. Yeah, uh, organic seeds, seeds or uh, heirloom seeds. We're, we're going to have a seed swap here this week. I'm sorry to be on top of it, but we're going to try to do the same thing here locally and have a seed seedling and And in America and other places, there's, well, America, because in Europe they have the labeling and they have um, a, a strong social recognition of, of the uh, problems that come with GMOs. And we but here we have a GMO label movement that uh, is one of the most pressing things that we should be working on. Yeah, 90%, I know in Vermont, 90 plus percent of the people and the population of Vermont wants labeling, but then Monsanto threatened if they said that, that they force them to label, Monsanto threatened to sue the state of Vermont for um, uh, neglecting their right to remain silent by forcing them to label 
And I know that there's two counties in Northern California where, where locally within the county they banned any type of um, uh, genetically engineered anything, whether it's, you know, uh, corn, soybeans, or any type of plants or products. But that's only in two counties in California, in Northern California. But other than that, uh, it's, it's pretty much allows them to do whatever the heck they want in the U.S. right now, and they control 90% of their corn products, which is in, like, everything. If you drink a Pepsi, it's yeah, corn syrup, if you, you know, uh, soy fillers and everything, uh, right down to, like, toothpaste and deodorant. 93% of, of the corn products, it's in 70% of the soy products, and over 50% of all your cotton products are all uh, GMOs. Specifically, Monsanto and then there's Dow Company who's coming up with another product now that their Roundup, Monsanto's uh, Roundup product is failing because there's weeds now that are starting to grow through that stuff. So Dow Company is coming up with another chemical. I, I can't remember what it's called, but um, it, it affects the plants that can now make it through that have, you know, become accustomed to the Roundup. And uh, it's basically the same same chemical that was found in Agent Orange. To be protest of, of uh, uh, corporate takeover of, of food systems and the problems that farmers are having in terms of World Trade Organization or other Bretton Woods uh, organization sponsored programs that are uh, taking away uh, uh, farmers land and farmers uh, ability as as uh, individual family farm owners uh, to participate or to to, uh, to compete in the system it just seems like uh all living things need all living things need food, water, oxygen, and it seems like there's, there's companies wanting to deprive us of that or control it. You know, control our food, our water supply with the fracking, our food with GMOs and Roundup, and Monsanto, and Dow, and, and uh, you know our air our air quality is already pretty fucked with the. Uh, on oil and fossil fuels and stuff like that. So pretty much the three basic things that all life needs, you know, food, water, and air. It seems like uh, there's companies like trying to grab control of yeah. all of that and deny us those basic things we need to live, you know. So. One of the important things is, is um, and I'm going to get to it in a minute, but I can just say it now, the United Nations in 2010 uh, recharacterized water and sanitation, access to water and sanitation, as uh, basic human rights, yeah. uh, as human rights. So if you, uh, say, channelize a river or uh, create a dam or where uh, that leads to somebody not being able to have access to water where they had it before, you are, vi that's a human rights violation. Right. And that's the exact kind of thing. It's a non-binding, it's a non-binding agreement, but the spirit of it is exactly right. That uh, you don't just violate somebody's human rights when you take them, you, when you enslave them or kill them or um, other things that you, you might do. Uh, by taking away someone's access to resource, you're taking away their access to life. Yeah. Um, and this is amongst one of the most important things that we can be doing. I think it is too. I, I fully agree with that. Whether it you know has to do with our food, our water, our land, our air, you know, those are basic things that not only us we need, every everybody on the planet needs that. Everybody, not just us, but every living thing, including the animals and plants and 